Hey everybody, AmpreparaGuy.com, also HarbachElectronics.com. Please like, share, and subscribe so you get an email when I post a new video. So, packed a whole bunch of Harbach kits early this morning and had some other stuff to do and got to work some more on the uh, multiband amp. I'm getting excited. I want to get this thing done. So, I'm going to explain what I've been doing here. So we have a 12 volt supply. I use this because I already had it. I bought these transformers a long time ago, so I used them. We have an ODC5, which is uh, being used for the soft key. Have these rectifier blocks. I bought the resistor and capacitor. So 12 volt supply. This ends up being 26 volts. Starts out hot. It has a 220 primary. Starts out at like, you know, through a full wave bridge. It's around 40 volts. So that's what the dropping resistor is for. This capacitor speeds up the relays. Using one half of this transformer also starts off hot. So I'm using a series dropping resistor. The bleeder and the cap across the rectifier. You got the bleeder and cap for this rectifier. So this powers this. This powers the RJ1A for the biasing and the RJ1A for the input TR switching and the two parallel RJ2Bs. Okay, and this powers the protection board. So I have it all wired up, all Teflon wiring. I love that stuff. Uh, 240 here and then all the other connections. I wrote it all down so I'd remember what's what. This allows me to put this in, plug the connectors in, and then if I need to take it out, take the four screws out, unplug these, and pull the whole assembly out. Okay, so I'm going to show it in the cabinet. I'll be right back. Okay, so this is it in the cabinet. These connectors are for the blower slash soft start belay board. So you see plenty of plenty of clearance. The high voltage cable assembly, which is right here, that unplugs, that's called an Alden plug. So there's plenty of clearance for this there. Plenty of clearance for the blower. That's why it's mounted to the cover. Dropped it in. Look through the hole back here to make sure you have the proper clearance. This is an interlock. Opens up the plate supply if that assembly is off. So left the yeah, the fuse holder. I haven't done that yet. So you see the all the uh, split washer, then other washer. See. The, the supports in here already have a nut pressed in, so easy peasy. One there, one over there, one over there, one over there. So this allows access to everything over here if need be. All this needs to be wired. I'll explain that. All Teflon wiring, so except for the stock wiring. But the center conductor is actually silver plated, stranded, good stuff. And that's the cap for the delay off for the blower is already here. And you have the nice bat switch, locking bat, bat switch for the on off, which will power one of these relays. Okay, so these all have a 240 coil. Nothing in here runs on 120, it's all 240. Okay, you got the interlock, the pressure interlock. Installed. Just one thing at a time. I'm going to work my way around. Last thing that will go in will be the, I mean, the, you know, after all this is done, then the capacitors will go in. But I'll have the series uh, glitch resistor assembly made, all the holes drilled. Uh, rectifiers going in here somewhere. I'm using the same ones that I have in the, the large amp, the Peter All ones. Really good ones. And um, I already have like a whole bunch of those. So anyway, um, commercially made will look nice. So I just want to make sure I get all this done. I don't want to damage the electrolytic caps. So coming along, coming along. 
taking some brain power, but I'm getting her done. Secondary for the filament will connect to the 100 amp super cons, and you have the primary will connect one. Um, actually, uh, it'll connect over to the variac, and then um, switch by one of these relays. And the relay switch by the pressure interlock. I'm going too deep into this. So interlocks key the the magic word here. Interlocks grid overload, plate overload, protection, 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 fuses. This thing should be bulletproof. Tubes are not cheap. The more protection you have, the better. This thing will be in another room. Who knows if I'll use it. Might use it here and there. But it's out of sight, out of mind. When you have uh, something set up like that, you want protection, protection, protection. Even if it's in with you, things happen. You know, antennas come down. A little squirrel or something could chew up the coax. You can have an open or whatever. You know, putting a, an amp into an open is a big no-no, whether it's tube or solid state. Tube amps are usually more forgiving, but, you know, having these extra protection features will save that tube. Tubes are not, I'll say it again, they're not cheap. Not cheap, not cheap, not cheap. It's a lot easier to change a fuse, you know, than replace diodes, replace a tube, replace this, replace that, you know. That takes time, you know, if you don't know how to work on your own amp, then you have to send it to someone, then you have shipping or time to drive it there, then a lot of times guys make you wait a year, you know, I don't do that to people, but, and you can't get a hold of them or whatever, you know, so, all this info is online, you know, Tom has the info on his page, uh, you know, Rich measures uh, his info somewhere online, all, you know, he, he was a great guy, he passed away, good guy, but, um, all of this is online. It's nothing new. It's just, it's all there. Just have to read it. You know, it, takes, it just takes so much time. A lot of people think this is quick. It just takes time. Time, time, time. That is looking pretty, right? Really pretty. It's going to be all zip tied, obviously. I have those um, stick on zip tie thingies that hold it to the chassis. So, yeah, this hangs from the cover. This cover. And then there's a hole in the bottom cover of the RF deck, and it'll pressurize that. And then I'll have a little, like a, um, like I did with the six meter amp, I'll have a hole um, of like a uh, barb fitting with thread with a nut, and it'll pro go through. It'll be mounted to this, and then it'll protrude up through the bottom cover of the RF deck. So blower stopped working, then it, it, it would shut down. And a blower line is after these two fuses. I'm, I'm sorry, before these two fuses, and they have their own circuit breaker. So if those fuses pop for some reason, the blower would go for the preset delay off. And anyway, it's bigger than what it needs. So that's not really needed, but it's already here. So I'm using it. Okay, and I, again, I love mercury contactors. They're awesome. I don't have to worry about pitting or any of that stuff over time contacts. Okay, so thanks for watching, and I'll be back soon with another video. 73. Remember, I'm using parts that I have, that have accumulated, but all of the parts are, like I had to buy these two resistors, but all the parts here are within spec. So for its total output power capacity, they all have, either they're rated for what's needed, or actually pretty much everything's rated for slightly more. Um, you know, if you go crazy overkill, then it kind of makes people wonder, do you really know what you're doing? Plus it takes up more space. So the key is proper parts, you know, most amps aren't rated for continuous duty. This one is. So it's kind of like, you know, boils down to what you can afford, what you can fit and yada, yada, yada. So I have a whole box of these relays. They're great relays. Um, Potter Brumsfield, I think, or AMF or whatever, but... Okay, right, so again, see you guys soon. I'm babbling away. <laughs> so, okay, have a great day. See you soon. Again, please like, share, and subscribe if you'd like to get an update when I do another one or an amp repair. 73.